Hello everyone, and uh, welcome to DCS World. Now, bear with me here. I don't have a very high-end PC, so the graphics are a little iffy. But uh, I still want to show you guys, you know, or bring you guys along with me to learn how to fly the P-51 in uh, DCS World. So let's get started. This is one of my favorite uh, Welcome to the startup lesson. World War II planes. Press the space bar key to begin. So, okay, yeah. Sorry, guys. I know the graphics aren't really the engine start the sequence best, is but... not very complicated. We will move around the cockpit clockwise, starting on the left side to configure the aircraft for engine start. Let's begin with the flaps control handle, positioned to the rear bottom left side of the cockpit. For a normal takeoff, flaps are not usually lowered. However, fifteen to twenty degrees of flaps can be used. Come on, not in the takeoff is required. Okay. Set the flaps control handle all the way up to the up position. To do this, you can either click and drag the handle with the mouse, or press left shift plus F command repeatedly until it is all the way up. Note, the flaps won't actually come up until the engine is running, and there is sufficient pressure in the hydraulic system to raise them. Where are the flaps? I'm trying- oh, I just hit my head. Where are the flaps at? Oh, this. Now set the carburetor induction system for normal operation by moving the cold air control handle all the way forward to the ram air position and the hot air control handle all the way forward to the normal position. Next, set the coolant and oil radiator air control switches to the auto position for automatic operation of the coolant and oil radiator flap doors. To do so, left click on the auto switch positions. Don't forget to close the switch covers after. Adjust the trim tabs to prepare for takeoff. Set rudder trim to 5 degrees right. Elevator trim can be left neutral. Aileron trim remains neutral. On the throttle quadrant, ensure the propeller RPM lever marked P is set all the way forward to increase and the fuel mixture lever marked M is set to idle cutoff. Set the throttle handle about one inch forward from the fullback position to slightly open the throttle butterfly valve and allow air to flow to the engine. If you don't have a throttle controller, the plus and minus keys on the keyboard numpad can be used to move the throttle handle. Moving to the engine control panel okay. on the front dash, turn on the fuel booster pump by setting the fuel booster switch to the up position by clicking over the switch. Yeah. Select the left and right magnetos to provide power to the engine ignition system by setting the ignition switch to both. On the fuel control panel, ensure that the left wing tank is selected for fuel consumption by checking that the fuel selector valve is set to the main tank of each position. Open the fuel shutoff valve by clicking on it to set it to the on position. Let's set the parking brake to make sure we remain stationary when the engine begins to pull. You may want to open the controls indicator by pressing right control plus enter to monitor the positions of your flight controls, including the brakes. Setting the parking brake takes a few steps. First, pull out and hold the parking brake handle by clicking and holding it. Okay. Next, while continuing to hold the parking brake handle, fully press the brake pedals by holding down the W key. There we go. Continuing to hold the parking brake handle, release the wheel brakes by releasing the W key. Now release the parking brake handle to set the parking brake. If done correctly, the parking brake handle should remain in the pulled out position. Yep, I got it. We'll now move on to the electrical control panel on the right side of the cockpit. Okay. Set the battery switch to the up position to provide electrical power. Also, set the generator switch to the up position to prepare the generator to take over once the engine is running over 1500 to 1700 RPM. Okay. Click and hold the primer switch on the engine control panel for about one second to feed some fuel to the engine. When started in cold temperatures, up to four seconds of prime may be necessary. We are now ready to attempt an engine start. <sighs> to do so, first press and hold the starter switch to operate the starter and begin turning the engine. As the engine begins to catch, move the fuel mixture control lever on the throttle quadrant to the run position by right-clicking on it once. 
If you aren't able to start the engine successfully, return the fuel mixer lever to idle cutoff by left clicking and repeat the process starting with priming the engine. Note, the engine starter can be easily overheated. The starter should not be used for more than 4 20 second attempts to start, with 15 second intervals, followed by a 5 minute cooling off period. Come on. Turn on! Good start. There we now go. Now we need to make sure the engine is running smoothly without any indications of a problem. Use the RPM gauge and adjust the throttle to run the engine at about 1200 to 1300 RPM. Monitor the engine gauge to check the oil pressure to reach at least 50 PSI and the oil temperature to reach at least 40 degrees Celsius. Check the suction gauge to make sure it is showing a normal suction reading of 3.75 to 4.25 inches. Press the space bar key to proceed. Okay. Check the hydraulic pressure gauge to make sure it is reading a normal pressure of 800 to 1100 PSI. Check the oxygen pressure gauge to make sure it is reading a normal pressure of 400 PSI. Press the well, I can't really see that because it's my Continue to idle really the engine good, but... at 1,000 to 1,200 RPM until ready to taxi or perform a pre-flight check. Remember to release the parking brake before taxiing. To do so, fully depress and release the wheel brake's W key. This concludes the engine start lesson. Well done. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and move on to taxiing and takeoff. Alrighty. Okay. Let's do this. So yeah, I know the graphics aren't the best. I do apologize. My PC isn't very high end. I have a thirty sixty Ti graphics card, so it's a little brutal. But I hope you guys still enjoy me learning this. Welcome to the taxi lesson. Press the space bar key to begin. I'm trying to upgrade my PC for my birthday, so... As with most other aircraft configured with a tail-dragging undercarriage, taxiing in the P-51 can be tricky. Forward visibility is obstructed by the nose, and it doesn't take much to nose over into the ground. To maintain awareness of the area ahead, the aircraft is taxied in a zigzag or S pattern, turning it from side to side as it rolls forward. You can move your head position to either side in the cockpit to peek around the nose. To do so, press left alt plus C to enable mouse view mode, and press and hold the mouse wheel while dragging the mouse left and right. Uh, I think I'll be all right. You can use the commands right control plus right shift plus num4 and right control plus right shift plus num6 to move your head from side to side. Press the space bar key to proceed. I think I'll be okay, yeah, but that's not bad. Another important yeah, element to keep in mind is the position of the control stick. When the stick is held aft of center, pulled toward the pilot, the tail wheel is limited to six degrees of rotation to either side. This is the standard taxi and takeoff position of the stick. It helps maintain directional control, but limits the turning radius of the aircraft. When the stick is pushed forward of neutral, the tail wheel is unlocked and becomes free swiveling. In this case, the rudder pedals do not control the tail wheel. This makes it possible to perform tight turns, but can be very tricky to control as the aircraft rotation can be sudden and violent, depending on speed, applied brakes, engine power, and rudder position. Press the space bar key to proceed. When taxiing over a smooth and level surface, such as this runway, very little engine power is required. It's also best to minimize the use of brakes to prevent unnecessary wear and heating. Hot brakes can easily ice over after takeoff as the aircraft climbs into colder temperatures at altitude. Press the space bar key to proceed. Press right control plus enter to open the controls indicator so you can monitor the position of your flight control. I think I'll be all right. Oh, okay, I actually have to do it. Okay. Pull the control stick aft of center and hold it there to keep the tail wheel locked for taxiing. To practice taxi control, we will use a lead car to take you through a short taxiing course. The car is now waiting in position to your left. Press the space bar key. Uh, I'm to moving. To begin. Okay. The car will now drive forward at about 10 mph. Add a little power to begin moving forward. Use the numpad plus and minus keys to control the throttle. I am Use the behind. Z and X keys to control the rudder pedals to turn left and right. Use the W key to depress the wheel brakes as required. Zigzag from side to side as you follow the car through the course. 
Try to stay between 100 and 300 feet from the car. Don't worry, if you get too far behind, it will stop until you catch up. Don't get too close either, or the driver will panic from fear of being turned into mincemeat and will stop. Oh, looks like we have to wait then. Man, why are my graphics so bad? I'm sorry, guys. I hope it looks better on you guys' screen. The car will now turn onto the taxiway to the right. We need to turn around. Oh, I messed this up so bad. The car has stopped, so you can catch up. Yeah, I know. I gotta make a giant U-turn. Oh, this is bad. Oh, this is really bad. I should have waited. Okay. 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 <laughs> That's what I get. That is what I get. To your left. Press the space okay. bar key when you are ready to begin. We're back. Sorry about that. We're back. The car will now drive forward at about 10 mph. Add a little power to begin moving forward. Use the numpad plus and minus keys to control the throttle. Use the Z and X keys to control the rudder pedals to turn left and right. Use the W key to depress the wheel brakes as required. Zigzag from side to side as you follow the car through the course. Try to stay between 100 and 300 feet from the car. Ooh, ooh, I'm sorry, Don't I'm worry. Sorry. If you get too far behind, it will stop until you catch up. Oh, I'm so sorry. Don't get too close either, or the driver will panic from fear of being turned into mincemeat and will stop. Yep. Too fast, too fast. The car will now turn onto the taxiway to the right. Is it gonna turn? Okay. I apologize, I just killed our driver. <laughs> uh. This thing is not like turning. Holy. Oh, I'm gonna tip over. I cannot. I cannot get this thing to turn as. Crap, I suck at this. The car has stopped, so you can catch up. Yes, thank you. Look, I also learned how to zoom, though. Look at this. I can zoom now. Uh, why is my... Uh-oh. Too fast. The car is moving again. Oh gosh, this is really bad. Oh, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be a pilot in real life. This is really bad. Oh, man. Okay. Uh... Oh, we're gonna hit some Hallies. Oh, no, okay. Why is my... Okay. Alright, you know what? You know what? This is what I'm supposed to be looking. It completely messed up my thing, too. Where is my mouse? Okay, can I... Okay, can I move this? Can I recenter this, please? I would like to recenter where I'm looking. How do I recenter? There we go. Uh, okay, we're just gonna go straight to takeoff. There we go. Now I'm actually supposed to. I'm actually looking where I'm supposed to look. You know, that that helps too. Okay, let's do this. Let's take off. Welcome to the takeoff lesson. Yeah. Press the space bar key to begin. 
I'm ready to go. The 51 is generally very controllable in takeoff, but the powerful engine and large propeller spinning at the front do require careful use of the rudder in order to maintain a straight course down the runway. A right rudder trim of 5 to 6 degrees is a standard takeoff setting and is usually sufficient to maintain directional stability Oops. in the takeoff run. A normal takeoff is performed at takeoff power, which is 61 inches of manifold pressure at 3,000 RPM. However, to minimize controllability issues while practicing, we will take off at a reduced power setting of about 50 inches of manifold pressure. Press the space bar key to proceed. Your primary instruments during the takeoff run will be the airspeed indicator on the left side of the instrument panel and the manifold pressure indicator on the right side. Once in the air, we will use the turn indicator and the rate of climb indicator to maintain a desired flight path. Okay. Press the space bar key to proceed. I'm ready. The first key element of a successful takeoff is a gradual onset of power. You cannot just slam the throttle forward. The torque effects of a sudden burst of power are very likely to run you off the runway and into the grass with devastating results. The other key element is the tail lift. As the aircraft accelerates toward 100 miles per hour, the tail will lift itself off the ground, unless held down with some stick back pressure. You can perform a takeoff without a tail lift by simply holding the stick back to maintain a three-point attitude until the plane flies itself off the ground. Most pilots, however, prefer to let the tail rise up to continue accelerating while running on the front wheels before lifting off into the air. Press the space bar key to proceed. The takeoff starts with the stick held back to keep the tail wheel locked for a controlled ground run. To perform a tail lift, neutralize the stick as speed approaches 100 miles per hour. Be careful to avoid lifting the tail too early by pushing the stick forward. The changes in pitch angles occurring during the tail lift cause significant directional instability, which is more difficult to control at slower speeds. Careful rudder input will be required to maintain heading as the tail lifts. You may need to alternate a bit of right and left rudder input before stabilizing for the liftoff. Okay. Press the space bar key to proceed. This is going to go really good. In a normal takeoff. 15 to 20 degrees of down flaps are used when a minimum run takeoff is required. Press right control plus enter to open the controls indicator so you can monitor the position of your flight controls. To prepare for the takeoff run, set the rudder trim to about 5 degrees right. Click and drag the rudder trim tab control wheel. On the throttle quadrant, make sure the RPM lever is set all the way forward to increase. If not, press and hold the page up key to set it. Hold down the wheel brakes using the W key. Okay. Using the numpad plus and minus keys, control the throttle to set the manifold pressure to about 30 inches. There we go. Sorry. Uh, okay, where were we? Okay. Keep the stick pulled somewhat aft of neutral to keep the tail wheel locked. Whenever you're ready, release the wheel brakes to begin the takeoff run. Use the rudder or uh -oh. CNX keys to maintain your heading down the runway. Gradually add power to set about 50 inches of manifold pressure. Neutralize the stick to lift the tail. Easy on the rudder. Ah, uh, okay. Gently pull back on the stick to take off. Watch the turn indicator and use your rudder and aileron control to maintain your takeoff flight path by keeping the ball and needle center. Retract the gear with the G key. Monitor the landing gear warning lights to make sure the gear retracts and locks successfully. Lights extinguish. Check the coolant temperature gauge for a normal reading. 
Reduce power to maximum continuous by first setting 46 inches manifold pressure and then reducing RPM to 2700. Did it. We did it. We took off. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm trying to upgrade my PC. Oh, this is awesome. This is so cool. Isn't that cool? Look at us fly. Carol. That's so cool. Man, this is so much fun. You guys wanna get low to the ground? I just need to get low to the ground. See some flybys, yeah? Power. I think it's going to the right a lot. Right. Maybe we're not high enough. Uh, let's climb a little. Wow. I wish my graphics were better, guys. I'm really sorry, but it's still so cool. So yeah, that's the P-51 in DCS world. Uh, one of my favorite World War II fighters. And I was able to get it off the ground, thankfully. Uh, more DCS world content uh, soon. Uh, I have posted it before. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, though. I just like a mission or something, but yeah. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I know it was pretty basic. Uh, for my birthday, I'm going to try and upgrade my PC a little and get and get a new jet. So, you guys will have some content <laughs> coming soon, hopefully, but who knows? We'll see. Wow. So cool. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Uh, before we go, I just want to say I will be upping my, uh, my, uh, what's it called? Video uploads. Uh, I'll be uploading on Saturday now. Uh, we're super close to 500 subs, or 400 too, so I'd like to get that, so I'm going to start pumping out videos a little bit more for you guys, so. Anyways, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Cinematic Fly, bye, goodbye, let's see.